Hey everyone, it's uh, Mike Bonds. I get a lot of questions about my Hummingbird setup, so I thought I would show you a quick uh, tutorial on how I set things up and the settings I use and some of the equipment I use. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So first we'll start with uh, the camera, I guess. And the camera is a Canon 6D. Uh, as you can see, I also have a 400 millimeter um, f5.6L Canon lens on it with a 1.4 teleconverter right here. And then today I'm also using a 20 millimeter extension too, just because the minimum focus distance for the 400 millimeter is actually quite long at 3.5 meters. So today I'm actually working a little closer than 3.5 meters, probably around a little less than three meters. So I need to um, shorten that minimum focus distance. So this uh, extension tube allows me to do that. Okay, I'm on a simple uh, ball head uh, on a tripod. And up top, you can see I'm using a, uh, a young Nuo uh, 622C TX uh, flash trigger. Okay, so this allows me to uh, trigger my uh, flashes from the camera here. Um, as you can see, all the I use 130 seconds power for all the uh, all the flashes. It's really important because this allows me to freeze the action at. Uh, Approximately one ten thousandth of a second is the flash duration when you're at one thirty seconds power. Okay. On the camera, I'm at uh, one eight um, one one hundred eightieth of a second f eighteen. Today I'm using f uh, f eighteen. Sorry, uh, ISO eight hundred. Of course, I'm in manual focus because the lens won't uh, autofocus past uh, at 5.6 on this uh, on this camera. Okay. White balance, of course, is set to uh, flash because that's my only source of light. And let's take a look at the flash setup. Okay, and here's the uh, flash setup that I'm using today. It's a pretty simple one, really. It uses uh, four flashes, two are Canon 430EX2s. And uh, two are the uh, Young Nuo 460. Um, they're just manual flashes. Uh, they're basically optically triggered. So when my Canon flashes go off, the Young Nuos respond and they fire as well at the same time. Uh, I've actually never had any problems with the syncing of them. It actually works pretty good. So this is the Canon. As you see, 130 seconds power. It's on a uh, Young Nuo 622C uh, trigger, so that this is what receives the uh, input from the camera. And then, uh, of course, it's uh, that's the flash there. Again, another 622C with a 430EX2 on it. These are the Young Nuo uh, flashes. So, this one up top will light the, uh, the bird from above. This one down here will light the background, which this is all I simply use for a background. It's just a piece of uh, photo paper, matte photo paper, uh, eight and a half by 11. I just printed it out of my printer. Uh, it's very simple. I used to use uh, uh, like actual flowers in the background. The problem becomes is uh, actually lighting the flowers. It gets quite hard. And speaking of flowers, this is the flower we're actually using today. It's a uh, cardinal flower. Uh, hummingbirds love it. Of course, it's red. Uh, actually, the uh, hummingbird is actually the main pollinator for this uh, for this flower. Yeah. And all I do is I simply pick it from my garden, uh, attach it to a uh, uh, just a piece of wire. It allows me to manipulate it a little bit into the position I like. Uh, and then I just simply just use a, a gardening pot just to kind of hold that in in place. Okay. In order to put nectar or sugar water i should say into the uh, flower what i'll do is i'll take a, a syringe fill it up with your just your sugar water from your normal hummingbird feeder and i'll just put it right into the uh into the flower like that this allows you to keep the bird at the flower for a much longer time and allows you to get more uh more pictures of, of the flower of the bird at the flower all right so i like to uh use live view uh, to actually focus in on the flower and kind of get my overall composition down. So switch to the live view. 
You'll see that when you do it, you're just going to get a block screen because uh, it's basically just showing you the uh, sort of the ambient light that you would have for the settings that you have dialed in. Of course, we're using flash. So as soon as I hit the uh, the shutter button, it's going to uh, give you a simulated exposure. So as you see, there's my uh, my flower, my background. I can zoom in. I usually zoom in to about five times uh, power. You can go to ten times, and I'll just. I can see it's just a little out of focus to the actual, flower, the actual uh, flower bloom that I want. So I'm just going to change that just a little bit. Bring it completely in focus. So right there is about good. And then I'll just exit out of live view. Okay, so I've taken off the uh, L bracket that you've probably seen that was previously attached to the camera because I can't have the L bracket on and still use a cable remote. One of the things I like to do is actually just sit back um, with friends or family and a drink and you can actually do this uh, while you're photographing hummingbirds. Uh, so what I'm using here is just a, uh, it's, it's actually Trigger Trap Mobile. Plugs right in your phone. Uh, you can basically you can just use it for this purpose, like a just a simple cable release. Uh, so that's what I do. I'll plug it into my phone and I'll uh, just control the camera um, or the shutter through my uh, through my phone. My uh, my original camera uh, cable release uh, has a short in it, so that's why I'm using this today. It's uh, come in handy a lot of times. Um, just when either I leave my uh, cable release at home by accident or there's an issue with it so um, I have a couple of these laying around uh, it's extremely handy so I thought I'd go over some uh, settings uh, with you guys a little bit more uh, just to give you some reasoning why we use the settings that, uh, that we use so as you can see I'm using a 1 200th of a second uh, shutter speed but it's actually going to be 1 1 80th of a second because the max sync speed for this camera which is again the 6D is at uh, is 1 1 80th of a second. I'm using first curtain sync, not high speed sync. Um, if you use high speed sync, you're just going to get a lot of pulsating from the flashes. You're not actually going to freeze the hummingbird's wings. So you want to be at the um, the max sync speed. Okay. If your camera allows a faster sync speed of like you know 1 200ths or 1 250ths of a second or even 1 you know 320ths of a second. Use whatever the max sync speed for your camera is. You can see I'm at f18. Reason I'm at f18, although that might seem like a really narrow aperture, um, when you're at you're, when you're working at these close distances, like again three meters, and you're using a 400 millimeter lens with a 1.4 times teleconverter attached to it, it's uh, it's actually um, not a lot of depth of field. So f you need an f18 or so to get that. Uh, maximum depth of field. I'll use anywhere between, you know, maybe f 14, 16, like a lot, a lot of time around f 16, up to around say f 22 if I was using, like taking a picture of a quite a large uh, flower blossom. So if you had like maybe a, a large hibiscus or whatever and you want to get max depth of field, that's what I would use. Okay. Again, the ISO, um, that's going to be sort of dependent on what exposure you want and it's also the proximity of the flash to the subject and so that all these are kind of variables that you're going to have to play with to get the uh, the proper exposure but i would say you know your max uh, sync speed it's going to be pretty constant your aperture you know it's going to have to be um, usually fairly uh, fairly narrow okay again so you know f14 to you know in excess of f22 okay. and when you when you're doing this to make sure you have the uh, you're not getting any ambient light because if you have ambient light what you're going to get is you're going to get a lot of ghosting in the wings but you can see my camera is actually reading when I meter that which I'm in you can see matrix metering it's actually showing I'm over minus three stops like underexposed which is exactly where I want to be because if I uh, if I wasn't at that, then I'd actually be getting some exposure from the ambient light, which is going to give me again ghosting around the hummingbird's wings. All right, so I'm back out here in the garden. Uh, the cardinal flower that I was using uh, for the uh, the first part of the tutorial, it's uh, it's wilted, uh, so I need to find a new um, new flower to use. 
So, uh, of course, we're looking for flowers that hummingbirds actually like. Um, and the cardinal flower, you know, this is the middle of August, so it's starting to uh, to die off, as uh, are a lot of the other plants. So, you know, as you can see, I might be able to use that one again, uh, but I'm going to try something else. The, uh, the bee balm here has, has seen better days. However, honeysuckle is always a great plant to use. It's... Uh, it's got these nice long tubules. You can actually fill these up uh, quite easily uh, with the uh, with the needle and the sugar water. And uh, the hummingbirds love them. They're actually uh, in bloom for much of the summer, uh, so they make a great plant that the hummingbirds actually used to going to. So it makes it really easy to get some uh, some photos of them. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pick this bloom right here and we'll use this for the rest of the uh, the tutorial. All right. So I've changed flowers. Uh, I've moved the background and uh, I need to just make sure that I get this uh, this one bloom that I'm anticipating the, the hummingbird uh, coming into. It's already filled with uh, sugar water. So I'm just going to make sure that it is in focus. So I'm going to just go to, uh, again, five times. And I'm just going to move this focus ring. There we go. Right about there. Okay, so now we can see this uh, where I anticipate the hummingbird coming into. Um, He'll be on that same focus plane, and so he'll be nice and sharp. All right, so just a note, I, uh, I removed the 1.4 times teleconverter because uh, it was just too much zoom, uh, it was too long of focal length for uh, the new bloom that I was using with the, uh, the honeysuckle. So I've actually just gone to the 400 millimeter with the uh, 20 millimeter extension too, but actually this allows me to autofocus. So just in case I want to last second, you know, um, autofocus on the bird as it uh, changes position, I still could do that. Uh, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, just give me a message at uh, Mike Bond's uh, Photography on Facebook, or uh, you can look up the uh, website at mikebonds.com and message me right through that. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.